In this video tutorial, we'll discuss replicating data between two Buffalo Terra Station NAS devices on the same LAN. Now, in this example, I will use two identical Terra Station Pro Duo devices, but uh, you can mix and match your Terra Stations. Just make sure that they both support replication, and we always recommend that you update both to the latest firmware just to make sure that the replication is uh, completely compatible and that you're able to use uh, all the latest updates. Now, to start with this, we'll uh, configure either one first, but we'll go ahead and start with uh, the first Terra Station, which I've named Brian 1. And I have tab browsing set up uh, as well, and I have a Brian 2 Terra Station. So we're going to do a setup replication between Brian 1 and Brian 2. Now, to log into your Terra Stations, you can use Buffalo's NAS Navigator software or type the host name or IP address into any browser. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and log into the Brian 1 Terra Station. And by default, we'll go to the folder setup uh, area where we can set up our shares. Now, the default share is there. Now, we can use that for replication if we'd like. But uh, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, a, a separate share that's empty uh, to use for, for this replication job. So to do that, I'm going to press this Create Folder button. It'll start a, a folder creation wizard. I'm going to name this uh, folder source um, just because it's easy and it is going to be our data source. You can name it whatever you want, though. And pretty much the default settings are fine here. I will disable the recycle bin just because in replication, uh, I don't want to replicate the, uh, the recycle bin as I delete data. But that's, uh, that's purely an option. And when I'm done, I'm going to press the Save button. And that will deploy a source shared folder on the Brian 1 Terra Station. Um, that's it for now for the Brian 1 device. Now what we'll do is create a target share on the Brian 2. So I'm going to switch over to this tab and log into my uh, Brian 2 Terra Station. I'm going to repeat a very similar process. I'm going to create a new shared folder for this device, and uh, I will call it Target. Again, this is just a convenient name for the sake of this demo. Uh, I'll disable the recycle bin on this one as well. Now, this is the one important uh, step that we did not do on the source side. For any target share or for any share to be able to receive a replication from another Terra Station, the disk backup option needs to be checked. This tells the Terra Station to broadcast and allow that uh, target folder to uh, be able to receive replication from other Terra Stations. Um, if, you're, if there's multiple Terra Stations on the network or you're sharing administration abilities, you may want to put a remote uh, backup password on there, which makes it so uh, when you're configuring replication on, in this case, Brian 1, you have to provide a password to be able to access this. However, since I'm the only administrator, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank because it's just redundant security since I am the only admin that can log into these. But if that is the case, you do have the ability to uh, password protect this uh, replication target from receiving replication jobs. Um, also, as I didn't mention on the Brian one, uh, you can go ahead and configure access restrictions. The replication will run underneath that uh, all at a, at a lower level process. So uh, your users, you can still use access restriction and replicate. But for the sake of this demo, we will not use access restrictions. I'll go ahead and press save to deploy this share. So now on the Brian 2 Terra Station, I have this target uh, shared, which is what's going to receive it. You can also see that disk backup is a supported feature of it. I'm going to switch back over to my Brian 1 Terra Station now. Um, you can see the source share there, and disk backup's not required for the sending unit. Um, it's also worth noting mm -hmm. that uh, the way Buffalo's Terra Station replication works is it's a very push-based methodology. So you want to use the Terra Station and configure a uh, replication job where you're pushing from that local device to a, a remote target. Uh, and that's all configured under the Systems tab area. And then there's a Backup sub-tab. Now in the Backup sub-tab, there's uh, two basic types of backup. There's the scheduled type of backup, which is configured under Backup Job Setup. So this would be a nightly or a weekly backup job. And, uh, you can compress it, and you can do a lot of uh, advanced things, sort of like configured similarly to a tape backup type uh, backup profile. Or you can use the replication, which is a real-time data replication, which basically takes whatever files come into the source folder, they immediately replicate it as quickly as possible to the backup targets folder. With a very simple setup, there's not very much detailed configuration. It is real-time, so it's not scheduled. Uh, if you want to do a scheduled backup, use the backup jobs wizard. But for this demo, we'll do real-time replication. And to start that, we're going to press the Add button. That's going to scan our entire network. Actually, it's going to scan the entire local Terra Station, all of its folders, uh, and then it's going to scan all of the remote Terra Stations on the LAN uh, and see which ones have that disk backup checked. 
Um, if I do need to type a password in to include that, uh, that's done in this search for backup destination by password area. Now, depending on how many terrorist stations you have on your network, this scan can take up to a minute or so. When it's done, the loading will disappear and we can actually click on these uh, pull down menus. Now that the replication scan is done, you can see I can pull down both the backup source and the backup target. We'll start by selecting the backup source. This is going to show me every share and every folder beneath the share that's on this. So there was a folder called folder one underneath share, but uh, as I told in the beginning, we will use the source uh, shared folder as our backup source. And then we're going to push it to whatever uh, target we want. So when we use this pull down, we can see all of the terrorist stations on the network that have a disk backup uh, share available. So we are going to target the Brian 2's uh, terrorist stations target folder. Click that and we'll press save. Uh, you will get a warning. The way our replication works is uh, we are going to immediately copy everything from that source to that target. And the first step of that is to erase anything that's in the target share. So you want to make sure that uh, there isn't any data in that target share or if there is data in that target share that you don't mind it being uh, overwritten. Uh, so once you've uh, confirmed that, you can press the OK button and then it will deploy that job. And you can see here we have a backup source, which is the local source folder, and it's going to go to Brian 2's target shared folder. Um, I can go ahead and repeat this wizard and, and uh, create uh, different replication jobs. I can send that same backup source to a different target, or I can select a, a different backup source and send it to a different target. So you can have multiple jobs in here um, and replicate you know, one to many or, or many to one or those types of things. It's also worth uh, noting that once you uh, deploy it, just like we have, it can take about, about 30 seconds or so for it to set up all the shares. During that period, those shares may or may not be available, so you will have to wait, uh, wait a few seconds before you can access those shares. So what I'm going to do now is minimize my browser, and we can actually look at the shared folders. Um, so what I have here is my Brian 1 and my Brian 2 Terra Station, just accessing it through Windows Explorer. Um, I'm going to go into the source share. Uh, on Brian 1 and the target share on Brian 2. And you can see that there's nothing in them because they are brand new shares. What I'm going to do is I have about 200 megs worth of zip files here. I'm going to copy them into Brian 1 and then we'll see them uh, immediately replicate uh, behind the scenes to uh, Brian 2. Now this computer is on a 10-100 uh, connection so it will take a little while for these to, to come through. But uh, when, as they copy in, you'll start to see the fragments and cookie crumbs show up in, in Brian 2. Uh, Windows only refreshes every few seconds, so uh, it may take a few seconds for it to show up. You can see the replication happening in near real time. So now the uh, 200 megs are over in Brian 1, and you can see the, the files coming in. Um, data1.zip and data2.zip are uh, already finished, uh, and data3 will be the next one that's sent, uh, which is the large one. You can see it's cookie crumbs coming in, um, and uh, there you have it. I just replicated 200 megs in real time. Um, this is synchronous uh, replication, so now if I were to delete or modify the name of this data1, I'm going to go ahead and press the delete key. It will delete it from Brian2, so you have a real-time snapshot of, uh, of what's going on. Um, and you can, again, do this to multiple different devices. Similarly, you can create a new folder, and uh, that new folder will also show up in the target uh, shared folder area. And that pretty much concludes how to set up a replication. Uh, please stay tuned for the next video uh, where we will replicate to a terrorist station that is over the Internet and not on the same LAN. Thank you for watching this video tutorial.